Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, church. Welcome in person and online to worship here at Hey Good this morning. My name is Beth Givens. It's my joy to serve as one of the pastors here at Hey Good. I am joined in worship leadership today by Pastor Brittany Jan Jones, Joan Pye, Katrina Weaver, and our chancel choir and tech team. And if you were paying close attention, there was a new name to you in there. I want to introduce Katrina Weaver at the piano. Um, Katrina is joining us as our accompanist um, in this season. She has been playing piano since she was eight years old. I'm not going to ask her how old she is now, but it's a long time that she's been playing. And um, we are just so grateful to welcome her. She grew up in the area, and so um, we are glad to have found her and have her join our music team. Welcome. If this is your first time with us today, we extend a warm welcome to you. There are connect cards in the pew racks in front of you. You can use those to let us know that you're here today. Um, there's a QR code on one side, or you can complete information on the reverse and place it in the offering bowl that's out in the lobby. Also in the lobby are printed copies of our email and other um, things that will tell you a little bit more about Hey Good and our ministries here. Um, the month of October is a busy month. Please mark your calendars for October 14th when we host the Bayside High School tailgate and um, for their pre-homecoming festivities, and Saturday, October 28th, when we will hold a fall festival and trunk or treat. Uh, Pastor Brittany has an announcement about children's ministry volunteers. And a hush goes over the room. <laughs> All right, who's helped with children's ministry before? Raise your hands. Okay, not bad. All right. Once a month. Can someone do once a month? I'm not going to make you do it like I'm on a, uh, what is that, auctioneering show. I'm not going to do it like once a month. Who's got two once a month? But once a month, if you're willing to help with children's ministry at 1045. I know you want to worship at 930, and I love it. 1045, once a month. That's it. If you're not sure what you would need to do or if you're not sure confidence-wise, let me know. I'd love to talk to you more about it. You can either email me at Kong, like Congo, Kong Life at heygoodumcvb.org or, which is much shorter, in the circular table in the lobby, there's some forms to fill out. I would love for you all to help with our children to help them grow in Christian formation. If you've ever seen kids and been like, they're not speaking the right way, you have a great ministry to tell them how to speak, you know? Or if you've ever thought they should know that, you have a great ministry here to teach them as well. So, or if you're just like, these kids are awesome and I wanna spend more time with them, you also have a great ministry for that as well. So please fill out the form in the back or just keep praying on your heart. Thanks. This morning, we are concluding our four-week series, uh, Prayer Rocks. And next week, we're going to be um, beginning a series on formative Christian beliefs based on the Apostles' Creed. This is World Communion Sunday, so we will gather at the table this morning with Christians around the world, um, remembering the sacrament that unites us. Um, we have been decorating rocks during this Prayer rock series. There have been some rocks out in the lobby for you to decorate, and we invite you today, as we conclude this Prayer rock series, to take a rock or two, maybe gather a couple of friends, and take a prayer walk through a space in our community, and simply pray for the community, and then place the rocks in the community, in uh, spaces that you see, so that others Others might be aware of hey good our prayers for the community and more simply the love of God that is falling and resting on this community this morning we are turning to a very familiar text the Lord's Prayer to remind us of the difficult task of surrender in prayer and so as we prepare to move into worship, I want to invite you um, to join together in our breakthrough prayer. I think our tech folks it about up. Will you pray with me? Dear God, unbind us, your people, here at this crossroads as we seek to grow as your disciples. Reveal to Hagood UMC 
your will and your direction. Teach us how to welcome and care for others, serve you, and share your good news with our community. Amen. Gordon. Thank you. Uh, please remain seated for our invitation to worship. Lord, teach us to pray so we might awaken to the wonder of your presence, so we might feel gratitude for your gift of life today, so we might discover your kingdom as revealed in our human family, so we might declare your glory as we gather together. Lord, teach us to pray. Please stand as you're able as we sing our praise from the United Methodist Hymnal, page 496, Sweet Hour of Prayer. may be seated. I invite the children to come forward for a time with children with Pastor Brittany. Is that okay if I sit over here with you? Okay, great. Oh, I love to see it show up. Any children are welcome as long as you're under the age of 18. I know you're all children at heart, so I don't want to make you rush. There we go. She is really good. She waits until everyone's up here. We can make room. Good morning, y'all. Do you know what my name is? Pastor Brittany. Someone had it right. You'll get your candy later. But have you ever been through something really hard? Yeah? What's something you've been through that's really hard? Testing? Oh, 
Y'all remember the big state testing? Whew, that is really hard. Anyone else done something really hard? Waking up for church? Yep, that's really hard. <laughs> they said, no, I was awake at 5.30 a.m. I know. Waking up and making breakfast, definitely. That's hard. What else? What are some hard things you've been through? Yeah, trying to keep going when someone passes away. That's the hardest. That's the hardest. Well, sometimes when we go through really hard things, life just keeps going on, right? And it feels super overwhelming. Have y'all ever felt overwhelmed? All of y'all, yeah. Sometimes people think kids can't get overwhelmed. Y'all get overwhelmed too. Get anxious? Maybe feel like, you ever heard the phrase, throw in the towel? Oh, I love that. Someone goes, huh? Throw in the towel. That means you've been trying so hard and you just kind of want to give up. Or maybe you've seen someone wave a white flag. Have you ever seen that? No? Mm. Congregation, anyone ever seen someone wave the white flag? In Tom and Jerry, you saw him wave the white flag? <laughs> Hey, Jesus speaks in all means. What do you think it meant when they waved the white flag? They give up? Okay, yeah. They surrender. Oh, 10-point vocab word for today. Today's word is surrender. We're talking about how we surrender to God. Now, is surrendering, do you think it's always a bad thing? Mm -mm. Not really when you say it to God, definitely. Yeah, I know. You really want to hold the flag, or I might be hitting the candle. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone got a little less nervous. So today we're talking about surrendering to God, and that is not a bad thing. Because can God do everything? God is a lot bigger than us. So sometimes when we're surrendering, we're surrendering to someone who's more powerful, who can fight for us. And that's a pretty big deal. So in times where you're overwhelmed or you're scared or you're really sad and you feel like you can't do it all on your own, we pray to God and we say, thy will be done. You ever heard us say the Lord's Prayer and it says, thy will be done, and it sounds like an old school book, yeah? Thy will be done just means, God, I'm putting it in your hands. God, I can't fight anymore. Will you fight for me? It means giving up our holding on and not doing so great to let God fight for us. And that's a pretty big deal. Will y'all pray with me? Dear God, sometimes we get tired and feel like giving up. Help us to surrender and let you fight for us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. We're going to follow Miss Audrey for children's time. Please join me in the prayer of confession and assurance of pardon. Lord, whoops, sorry. Lord, teach us to pray so we might forgive those who have wronged us, so we might lead free from pretense and hypocrisy, so we might trust your perfect plans and not replace them with our own so we might love you with our whole hearts and love our neighbors as ourselves, so we might always know your merciful forgiveness. Lord, teach us to pray. Our gospel reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, may your name be revered as holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as, it, as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, 
Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Will you join your hearts in prayer with mine? Come Holy Spirit, speak through these words of your word that Jan has shared. Come Holy Spirit, speak through the words that I will now share. And come Holy Spirit and speak through our minds and hearts that in this time of proclamation, you might reshape us to look more like Christ. Amen. When I was growing up, I was active in our youth choir at church, which went on tour every summer, both, sing no, back to, back to the first one, that one's important, um, which went on tour every summer, both performing a musical and doing mission work. And one of my roles on the tour was to keep hold of the Folgers coffee can that had a slit cut in the top and decorated, was decorated with the words cussing cup. Yes, that's right. I was the enforcer of the fines for foul language on the youth mission trips and choir tours. You can see it, right? Yep, yep. Uh, I reveled in the role and I earned myself the nickname The General for the ruthless way I would catch my peers in the act and demand their fines. All the fines went to mission. Um, I was a strong-willed controller of that cussing cup and it was great fun, except maybe it wasn't. Maybe. I have reflected over the years that that role brought out the, the downside of my leadership strengths, emphasizing the controlling way that I can sometimes approach the world. Maybe that role emphasized that when I am not at my best, I can be a little demanding. I can insist that it is my way or the highway. As I have learned about leadership in my adult life and grown as a leader and as a follower of Jesus, I have come to realize that surrender is one of my greatest challenges. Realizing that perhaps I am not right all the time. <laughs> perhaps God does in fact have other ways of accomplishing things in this world not just my ways. I am so grateful for all the people who have patiently and lovingly walked this journey of growth with me and occasionally kicked me in the tush. This week, we continue our Prayer Rock series by thinking through one of the most difficult aspects of prayer for many people, surrender. Ironically, although many of us struggle with it, we pray for it regularly when we pray the Lord's Prayer and we speak that little line, thy, can you say it with me, will be done. As we pray those words, thy will be done, we are drawn back to the truth that it is not about us. Thy will be done. It's a gentle reminder to release our preferences, our plans, and our desires so that we can be open to God's will. It's a gentle reminder to surrender to the dunamis, the power of the Holy Spirit, so that we can be open to God's will each moment of each day of our lives. Thy will, able to say that authentically and fully is the desired outcome of the 28-day prayer experiment. What happens when we make prayer a priority all throughout our days, when, when those micro breakthrough prayers allow us to do that? Lead me to the rock that is greater than I. Do not fear. Let there be light. 
Because more often than not, in order for us to faithfully engage and carry out God's will, we will need to trust that God is leading us to the rock that is higher than I. We will need to calm our fears as God leads us to new and exciting places that, that push us to grow in our faith as a people and as a church. In order to follow God's will, our prayers will need to be persistent, strong, and to the point, like Pastor Brittany's pickaxe a couple of weeks ago. In order to follow God's will, we will have to release more of ourselves to allow God to fully move into our home our territory. Today's prayer, thy will be done, keeps us accountable, keeps us focused on God's hopes and dreams for our lives and for this church. Thy will be done is not resignation, that after trying with all your might to carry out your plans, your ideas, your ways, you turn to God's will as a last resort. Rather, thy will be done is opening our hearts and souls at the very beginning to the power of our Lord and Savior to do the work that only God is capable of doing. Thy will be done is dying to our desire for our lives, dying to our fears, our self-centeredness, and trusting that the one who created us knows what is best for our lives. That the one whose church we gather in knows what is best for the body of Christ. In our breakthrough prayer, we pray for the same sort of surrender. Reveal to Hey Good UMC your will and your direction. Not our will, not our desires, but God's. Sue Nelson Kibbe reminds us that this sort of prayer isn't advising God or instructing God for any particular outcome, since it's not humanly clear what the best outcome or next step should be. Rather, it is simply and repeatedly presenting the current outcome to God and asking God to completely use and transform it for God's miraculous use. My hope and prayer for all of us is that we become a people who are grounded in this sort of prayer, that each and every moment of each and every day we are trusting the Lord, seeking God's will, and courageously living into it. When that happens, I know without any doubt that we will experience peace, the unmistakable peace of Christ that will ground us and get us through all the days of our lives. I also know that when we as a church family can be praying, thy will be done, thy will be done, and surrendering our church and our ministry to God's will, extraordinary things will happen, and God's kingdom will come. It will be able to be seen right here in us and in our community. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we think about how our gifts make a difference and how we connect with our community, I want to tell you about a ministry that we sort of share with Virginia Wesleyan University and that is that on the fourth Sunday of each month, Virginia Wesleyan Marlin Ministries, directed by Marie Porter, invite youth from all over the area, not just Haygood, but from all over, Eastern Shore and down here uh, in uh, Chesapeake and uh, Virginia Beach, to come to Virginia Wesleyan for a night of praise and worship and fellowship with other youth groups. Um, that happens during the school year. It started up again last week. There are some pictures of that in the Beacon this week. That is one of the ways that we connect with our community and share God's love in our community, not just at Haygood, not just at Virginia Wesleyan, but throughout the area. Your gifts make that happen. Your gifts make a difference. 
You may give financially to Haygood online in the offering bowl that is out in the lobby or by mailing a check to us. As we begin to turn to the table this morning, um, I want to lift up just a couple of congregational concerns um, that I'm aware of. Uh, we have two members in the hospital, Brian Foreman and Pete Kundrat, hospitalized for different reasons. And so um, let's just pause for a moment and lift them in prayer. Oh God, we lift up to you, Brian and Pete, and others in our community and this world in need of your healing. We ask that you would pour out the power of the great physician into their bodies, their minds, their spirits, and bring them full and complete healing. Amen. This morning, we respond to God's word by sharing in Holy Communion together. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of worship that this is World Communion Sunday. On the first Sunday of October each year, Christians around the world gather at the table intentionally to remember this sacrament that unites us. Um, as we gather today, we're going to invite those who are able to come up the center aisle there will be two serving stations at the head of the center aisle. We invite you to receive a piece of bread from the server and then to take it and you get to choose. You can either dip it into the cup and consume it by the method of intinction or you can eat it and then take one of the smaller cups that will be in the tray that will be held by the servers. I invite you to hold out your hands and make the shape of a cross or a manger, whatever it looks like to you, so that the server can place the bread into the cup. If, excuse me, place, place the bread into your hand. Um, we will also be glad to come and serve those who are seated as we um, finish serving the people, and our choir will be coming first today. You can consume communion, either standing or kneeling at the altar rail, whatever is your preference. We remember as we prepare to turn to this table that these are Christ's gifts given for us. They don't belong to Haygood Church. They don't belong to me. They belong to God. And God invites all of God's children, no matter how young or old you are, no matter where you are in your walk with Christ, all are invited to receive the grace that comes in these gifts. Let me invite you to join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live all on the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. Christ commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today, his family in all the world gathers at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus gathered at table with his friends, took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and blessed it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you and shared it with them, saying, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in unison with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world. Strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until that day when Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of God's children, we pray that prayer of surrender that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many around the world are one body, for we all share in the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The table is ready. Let us keep the feast. I'll invite our servers and choir to come.
debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Oh,
Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery through which you have given yourself to us. As we have been fed by the mystery of your grace, send us out into the world now, surrendering to your will to be love and grace to all we will meet. In the name of Christ our Savior, amen. Let me invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our commitment. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and live through you this day and always. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.